Transmission in cooperation with the Georgia Southern Athletic Department. Full show. Featuring highlights of Georgia Southern football, 89. With Coach Irk Russell and the High Flying Eagles. Here to comment on this week's action is WJCL sportscaster Bill Edwards. Good evening again, everyone. Welcome to the Irk Russell Show, the third edition of the postseason Irk Russell Shows. And, uh, Irk, this is a team that I think we're carrying Southern hospitality a little too far with. It looks like uh, we, we brought them their weather. They brought their own, didn't they, Bill? It's, um, it's not exactly ideal for our offense, um, although the field's in real good shape. We've uh, had an awful lot of rain, but we got the best playing surface in America, I believe. It's handled it very well. Uh, my biggest concern are their <laughs> tremendous people over there, their front line on offense. How we're going to use our base four rush and get to the passer remains to be seen. We, we might be able to, but uh, based on what we've seen in film, they're very, very good at at doing doing their job and we'll probably probably have to resort to uh, more blitzing in this game than we ever have uh, on the other side of the ball you know they've got the best defense against the rush in the country and that'll be an interesting matchup to see if we can uh, do more against them with our rushing game than their opponents have the one option team that we've seen them play against didn't fare too well. That was Montana State. So, two real interesting matchups, I think. Our defense and its ability to rush the passer and cut down on their passing efficiency, and our offense's ability to go against the top rushing defense in the country. Coach Reed has said, however, he has never seen that uh, they have never seen an option like ours that it's totally foreign to them. Well, I hope he's right. And I'm sure he's, he's uh, telling you the truth because um, as far as we know, they have not encountered uh, even a wishbone team. And ours, of course, is very similar to that, except the deployment of people is different. Um, I'm sure that they, their coaches know what we do, and I'm sure that they will do a good job of deploying their people to stop our option. Now, a lot of people have said uh, you might think that um, the weather being the way it is is not uh, conducive for a passing game either that they have. Well, we can keep the ball very dry. A new ball every snap. Uh, we've got some magic formula over there on our bench, and I'm sure they've got some. You just put the ball in there like shake and bake and <laughs> shake it up, and it comes out dry. Uh, from that standpoint, I don't think that will be a factor. Uh, ordinarily, you'd think that the turf might be a factor in which case I think the receivers have the advantage over the defenders because of the footing uh, however our our field is in very good shape and I don't think that'll be a factor okay well I think we're pretty good too let's go out there and see if we can beat them Bill one more time let's go all right see and we'll see you with the first half highlights of the Montana contest right after we pause for this it's going to be a good afternoon when a the weather is just what your opponents thought they wanted b the much bigger foe performs like their feet are nailed to the turf c you score before you even get the football and d all of the above montana came in big and bad lean and mean but left long and forlorn battered and beaten the Grizzlies got their first crack at the football and on the second play montana quarterback grady bennett met giff smith four yards behind the line of scrimmage and it didn't take a nuclear physicist to realize the crowd loved it but if you like that play you'll love this one Bennett who usually gets enough time to do his homework in the backfield quickly was introduced to Patrick Parr 11 yards behind the line of scrimmage and it was a sight to behold suddenly these mammoths didn't seem so imposing we knew they were going to be big and they were First time I got the line of scrimmage, said, oh, boy, <laughs> they, they were big. So uh, we just had to use our quickness, and, and uh, we did. They weren't as strong as I thought they were going to be. Uh, so our strength was a big factor, too, and, and speed was the biggest factor. So I'm just grateful that, that we were able to rush the passer as good as we did. I say the blitzes look terrific today. 
Yeah, we, we had some big success with that. And like I said, I'm just glad we were able to get back there. And when it was punting time, surprise, surprise. For the second time in as many weeks, the Eagles blocked it and recovered it for the initial touchdown of the afternoon. It's the only time Montana's had a punt blocked all season. Jason Whitehead blocked it. Paul Sickley recovered. The Eagles were up 7 to nothing. I was really surprised that this week, the first play, big play, would be the punt. Uh, punt blocked. We practiced it all week, and it was uh, just like Coach Healy had, had drawn it out. I was surprised that they did have uh, Montana have had unusual wide splits, but they did, and we overloaded the left side, and luckily nobody picked me up. I came through free, and if I wasn't a blocker, they'd have probably taken me off. <laughs> Isn't it nice to, to have something like that in your repertoire two weeks in a row? Last week, it took the cap off and gave us a running start against Middle Tennessee and did the same thing um, here today. Jason Whitehead today was the member of the DDTs that came through and blocked a kick. You know, that's uh, two kind of new names for us the last two weeks that have gotten us off to such a good start. Montana thought that they would come back and tie it up. On first down, Jody Farmer swept left and got 14 yards, and it was looking pretty good. And on third and eight from their own 45, a 12-yard strike from Grady Bennett to Lorenzo Glenn was making it look even better. That, however, would be about it, as Bennett got away from a couple of tacklers a short time later, but Darrell Hendricks finally wrestled this bear to the turf for a four-yard loss, and the Grizzlies had to punt. So with the score 7-0 Georgia Southern, the Eagle offense took the field for the first time. Could they move through these mountains, a team that was tops in the NCAA against the rush, giving up an average of only 74 yards a game? Well, on the second Southern play from scrimmage, quarterback Raymond Gross nearly shot that average to smithereens as he went bear hunting, racing 59 yards to the UM 20. And on third and 14 from the 24, the Grizzlies got a first-hand look at the awesome option. A pitch to Darrell Hopkins on the corner and two good blocks outside by Carl Miller and Sean Ganey, among others. Darrell was loaded for Bear. And with Mike Dowis extra point, it was 14-0 in favor of the Eagle Bearskin Rug Company. We had a feeling that um, since, you know, they come from, from a passing conference that they had trouble with the option. So we just kept it simple, just run our basic stuff and it worked. It was a great touchdown run. Yeah, it was. I have to get credit to um, Carr for that good block he had out there. And um, Sorrell also, he had a good block out there to get me in. And I, was, I'm, I was just amazed how open it was, really. Darrell comes up with the big play, you know, when you need it. And uh, he's a great back. He, got, he has great hands. He blocks well. He runs well. And, um, you know, that's all credit to Darrell. And, uh, you know, he's just an exceptional athlete. The early going was not without its anxious moments, of course. Down by only 14, Bennett uncorked one deep. And even with two defenders hanging on him, Lorenzo Glenn made a magnificent catch at the Eagle 20. Watch again, and let's give credit where credit is due. This play was a thing of beauty. Fortunately, beauty did not prevail over the beast from the southeast. But just when it looked like the Grizzlies would cut the Eagle lead in half, it was Taz Dixon to the rescue. With Bennett under a heavy rush by Patrick Parr and Giff Smith, Grady never saw Mr. Dixon. A mistake over which Bennett has no exclusivity. And Tasmania was again breaking out in Statesboro. You know, we, like you said, we heard all week long about their offensive line and how, how we were not going to get any pressure on the quarterback and how we were not going to get any sacks. And I tell you what, our, our defensive line, they came to play today. I mean, we, I mean, we played well in the secondary. We covered well, but the defensive line really, I mean, they didn't sack him the whole day long, but they put enough pressure, had enough pressure on him the whole day to, to either make him get rid of the ball in a hurry or, or just you just frustrate him so much. That they, they just did an unreal job. By the start of the second quarter, it was obvious that Southern's option and tenacious defense was reducing these Grizzlies to teddy bears. A pitch to Ernest Thompson was good for 11, but a fourth and four situation arose, and Terry Harbin had to come in to punt. He got it away just fine. But a Grizzly got Terry. Naughty, naughty. Southern's ball first and 10 at the UM 37, and the Montanans were quickly learning they should eat more grits. Because from there, it was one, two, touchdown. First came a 31-yard strike from Raymond to Donnie Allen at the goal line. 
the Southern faithful wanted the official to give them the touchdown, but it was clearly a good call. No matter, Ernest Thompson hit right guard on the next play, and Southern was cruising 21 to nothing. The Eagles' next possession resulted in three more points, highlighted by a 32-yard missile from Gross to, once again, Ernest Thompson to put the Eagles in business at the UM-12. But from there, business got a little bogged down, so Mike Dowis was called on for his field goal services, and a 27-yarder was true GSC blue for a 24 to nothing advantage. Montana finally got on the scoreboard late in the second period thanks to three GSC mistakes. Roughing the kicker, having too many men on the field, both on fourth down, and this play when it looked like Jim Mutimer was going to intercept, but instead ricocheted out of his grasp and Lorenzo Glenn made a superb heads-up catch. Two plays later, Jody Farmer went slipping off the right side for the tally with 93 seconds to go in the half. Normally a little confidence booster but a play called Big Ben was ticking like a time bomb for the Grizzlies. With eight ticks on the clock, Big Ben's fuse was lit as Raymond unloaded from the enemy 41. Everybody was there. Montana almost had an interception until Carl Miller came in to knock the ball free. It bounced right into the loving arms of Donnie Allen and sent the Eagle fans into hysteria and the Eagles into the locker room with a 31-7 advantage. We had a great call at the end of the first half to score uh, on the Hail Mary pass, a well-executed play. Uh, you would think that we've worked on it time and time again, and we do run through it two or three times every Thursday just in case. I was willing to let the clock run out, uh, go to the dressing room, what, 28 to 7? Uh, 24 to 7. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, as a matter of fact, I sternly chastised our coach for calling time out. He said, well, we might as well take a shot. And I said, well, we might as well. And they did, and it worked. And we went out 31 to 7 and felt pretty good. Felt pretty good indeed. Ah, uh, underestimating those Eagles again. We'll talk about that at halftime next. The Georgia Southern Eagles have been on a tear throughout the playoffs, but for the last two weeks, the Eagles have simply been 100% and then somewhere beyond. Yeah, it, it seemed like um, after the Middle Tennessee game, Hugo, um, we sort of dropped a little bit, but we regained our composure and, you know, gained a little bit. And we've had a few rough quarters, but we're starting to finally pull it together. Well, I think as far as defensively is concerned, we've, uh, we've, concentrated the past two weeks more and, and been mentally ready more than really physically ready we've uh not saying we haven't the, the games previous to these last two but we've just concentrated more on what we're supposed to do in our assignments and uh really uh try to work towards that um, you know not saying we didn't before but like maybe it was 50 50 mentally physical and now it's uh, we just really as far as knowing what we got to do and uh, at the right time, making the right reads and adjustments and stuff, we were concentrating a lot more and just and, uh, mentally more prepared for each game. I think we want to send a message. Uh, we're playing up to our capabilities. I think everybody's playing, you know, where they should be playing. And uh, I think uh, we're just playing a complete ball game. I believe it's finally hit home that, you know, we can win it all. We, uh, we want to do something for the community. You know, we're playing here. And... Uh, we felt like we had to redeem ourselves from last year. And, uh, you know, we're playing our home turf, and we don't want to lose here. And, you know, I'm a senior, and I want to go out. I came in as a champion. I want to go out as a champion, you know, and I don't want to lose. To prevent that, the Eagles must now fly out on their final mission and do it just one more time. Well, some days you eat the bear, and some days the bear eats you. For Georgia Southern yesterday, it was clearly the former. Desperate for something good to happen to them, the Grizzlies tried an onside kick to start the second half. The strategy worked about as well as a government housing project, and the Eagles had the football. And on the third play of the third stanza, Raymond Gross tossed one right over the middle to Ernest Thompson, who was so all alone you'd have thought he'd forgotten to take his chlorettes. It was obvious the offensive line with guys like Sammy Twiggs and George Jones up front 
was determined to show the Missoula Monsters that might is not always right. Uh, Bill, they were huge. They were a massive uh, team, and uh, I thought that we were quicker uh, when we first got out there and uh, after the first series, you know. Um, I think uh, the option and getting outside on the pitch, you know, was uh, a problem for them. The, the free safety was real fast, but I felt like, you know, the speed helped us out a lot, and uh, they brought the cold with them and from Montana, and I think that uh, we just did a great job, you know, executing the plays. Uh, I don't think weather's really a factor for us anymore. You know, uh, we played up in Appalachian State a couple of years ago, and it was snowing and ice on the field, and uh, we came back and redeemed ourselves in uh, Hurricane Hugo, and uh, I just think that if uh, we're fired up and ready to play, that we can play in any way. We had watched films, you know, but until you go up against a player, you know, and, 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 and play them before, uh, and you don't really know what they're going to do or uh, the coaches tell you, but, you know, getting the feel of a guy is, uh, is different, you know, when you go out and play. So uh, after the first series, you know, I thought I was, you know, I felt pretty confident, you know, about the game, and um, we just executed and everything came out all right. Yeah, they, they were big dudes, but, but like I said in the press conference uh, Friday, I said, you know, if we come off the ball like we can, the rest will take care of itself. We have the best backs in America, so just let them make the decisions, you know. It looked like they were talking about they knew they could get, if we could get outside, there was, there was no contest, and that's exactly what we did. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about, as far as speed, some of the quickest people you'll ever see on our team. And I mean, that's left to right and front and back. I mean, they can go any way you want them to go. So I thought, they, I don't think they were ready for that, mm -hmm. you know. This is, a, this is a team that uh, they didn't do anything that was different. I think that they didn't look as strong as I thought they would be for their size. Yeah, they, uh, they came in here and, and they were pretty much talking a little trash, but, but I don't know, you know. They just, I don't know what happened. I mean, we just whipped them here. Whipped them indeed. The defense for the second week in a row was covering the opposition like the Lone Ranger in a helicopter. Jim Mutimer, Patrick Parr, and Steve Busoletti among them. Yeah, we played real well. Defensive line played excellent. If they went, we were relying on their pressure to help us out in the secondary, and when they get pressure on the quarterback, it helps us 110%. I think they did everything we expected them to do. Uh, I knew they were going to throw the ball a lot, and, and uh, they had success on a, on a couple little runs and draws and things, but, but uh, we were able to stop them when it counted. You know, size is nice to have, but you can't beat quickness, and that was the deciding factor in this game. Um, you know, our quickness just overwhelmed them. We put a lot of pressure on the quarterback, and we got back there. We seem to be a lot stronger than they were. Well, um, maybe it's just different techniques. They were just sitting back in the pocket, sinking their hips, and waiting for us to come, and, and we came. <laughs> no doubt about that, and we kept on coming offensively. Now, back in Montana, there is a valley known as the Little Bighorn, where history tells us General George Armstrong Custer rode competently through with his 7th Cavalry one fateful day. Custer thought he, too, was invincible, but when Sitting Bull rode down on him with all the Indians in the world, he and his troops found out differently. And so it was with Chief Sitting Irk and his Indians, who added another Montana massacre. Two carries by Carl Miller got us six more points despite Carl having the ball knocked loose. The official ruled he had crossed the plane and was 45 to seven GSC. And this extra footage courtesy of WTOC shows indeed he did. That didn't stop the argument from the Montana defenders, however. By now, Cindy Lauper could have been coaching the Eagles and it wouldn't have changed a thing. But the defense continued to perform above and beyond. Just ask Grady Bennett. Say, Grady, have you run into Giff Smith lately? Grady was too choked up to speak, but he did give up the football, and Steve Busoletti knew it was his Christmas present from the Big Sky Conference. The Eagles didn't score again, but the defensive intensity continued to preserve the third quarter miracle shutout. Just watch the pass coverage here, as everybody on the sidelines except team doctor Bob Swint got to play. And the crowd went counting down not the end of the game, but the third quarter, even though for all intents and purposes, this game was over. You know, I hadn't even thought about that again. But, yeah. you know, you can tell that our crowd was thinking about it, and I'm sure our players were thinking about it. And let me mention this before I forget it. This is the best crowd that we've had that I can remember for being in the game. It wasn't the biggest crowd. As a matter of fact, it was far from it. But they, they sounded spoke like the up. Yes, right. They, they really gave our team a lift today. Thanks, gang on the lift right into the national championship contest, we might add. And Irk will add final comments in a moment. Thousands of miles on the road for the Eagles. 
I never worry about my family on the road because they've been driving Ford to Meta Ford for 23 years. And for safety, comfort, and reliability, Meta Ford, the family Ford dealer, has been the national champion every year. Montana game, an absolutely incredible effort for the second week in a row, Irk. I know this team has been on a mission all year, but today it looked like, and, uh, and last week, too, you guys just played a cut above. They really surprised me, Bill. I never thought that uh, we'd go out and get things done uh, as quickly as we did today. I was uh, naturally well pleased, but uh, also surprised that we started out the game with our front four people getting to the quarterback a couple of times in the very first series. I think that gave them encouragement and they worked harder because of it. Uh, we were able to, to do that and I wasn't sure that we would be able to rush four and, and do the job that we wanted to. But our coverage was so good that it, it gave our rushes another second or two and that was just enough. Uh, we didn't know how they would deploy their people on defense. Um, we found out early that we could run the option. Uh, our A-backs and everybody um, blocked really well. And uh, we got the first possession in the end zone, I believe. And good things continue to happen from there. We, I guess um, the media hype all week, size versus speed, size versus speed. A lot of people think we're, now we're crying wolf as well as we win these ball games. It looked like uh, speed went out big time today. Well, anybody that passes the ball like they do needs big people up there. Uh, what we do uh, on offense and, and defense, really, you know, we'd like to have Giff Smith at, at 6'5", 255 with his same physical assets, but it doesn't come in packages like that. So we'll take what we got. Uh, people kind of think I cry wolf by talking about the mismatch. Um, it's not that so much as it's just a fact. Mm -hmm. And I would much prefer having a football player who can run than one who is just big. As a matter of fact, you can't play football nowadays unless you can run. Is that cigar taste? Pretty darn good. <laughs> okay, we have Stephen F. Austin coming in here next week. Team, of course, that uh, has got to have a little revenge on their mind, but these kids look like they're on a mission. I think just the fact that we're playing a national championship game here next Saturday is enough incentive for either team to be at a peak emotionally. If we come into the game as ready to play next week as we were this week, it's going to be a lot easier for us. Okay. Good luck, Coach. We'll see you then. Thank you, Bill. See you. All right. Appreciate it. And we'll see you here, too. It's going to be a big game next week. Stephen F. Austin going against Georgia Southern for the national championship at Paulson Stadium. From the stadium, I'm Bill Edwards. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll see you again next week on the Eric Russell Show. Good night. This has been the Eric Russell Show, featuring highlights of Georgia Southern football, 89. Tune in next Sunday night at 11 for another look at high-flying Eagle football action on the Eric Russell Show.